I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Christopher Mullen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. Chris, uh, the Dow, uh, big bump as uh, we speak, a bump upwards. But we've seen so many uh, big bumps down. What kind of a, is there a pattern that you can see or is this completely news driven? Well, you know, it's been, it's been a really rocky ride all of August. And most of August you could, you could say has been in a very big sideways range where we have these huge sell-offs with high volume selling followed by these massive rallies, uh, to negate, you know, the previous day's rally. So we've been trading sideways with pretty much all the major markets. So you look at the SP 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, they're all trading sideways in this big range. And there's been so much, um, selling in, in the markets and so much fear. And there's been a lot of volume traded here that when this pattern breaks, when we break to the upside or break down to the downside, there's going to be a very powerful move. And we're going to see, I think we're going to see a, a five or six percent run in equities. The question is, which way is it going to go? And at this point, obviously today, very strong day in the markets, SP 500 up, you know, percent and, and three quarter and a, and a half. Um, the NASDAQ up, uh, a percent and a half. So, I mean, it, you know, people are bullish today, but the reality is we've has seen this happen twice before this month where the market popped up on good news and they were China related and right to this level. And then the market stalled and rolled over and, and sold off in a big way. So we are in this range. The markets are popping today. They're testing resistance. They're overbought. Uh, they had a big gap up and gaps in the a- indexes always seem to fill eventually, meaning the price closed yesterday. Today, price gapped much higher. The market always needs to fill these gaps. So we're going to eventually see the market sell down to fill that gap from yesterday's close to today's open. So I am thinking we're going to see some selling step into the market, but we are ahead of the holidays here. We could see this could be a holiday bump, and maybe we see a little bit more buying to the upside or it holds up for another day or two before we see some sellers uh, step in probably next week. China has said it's not going to retaliate for the latest round of U.S. tariffs. Does this show that there's actually movement at the trade table? Yeah, you know, it, it seems like it, and and it could be a game changer. I mean, uh, if they do come to some type of agreement, we could see the markets have a really nice pop and rally. But I, I do feel as though even if something comes together there, uh, it'll spur on probably some new highs in the equities markets, but I do feel as though this last run here in the equities could be very much so just a news-driven kind of last push, exhaustion push, exhaustion push higher on news. So uh, it is bullish if there is some follow-through with, with uh, what's going on over there in China and, and some agreements. Uh, it's it's very good for stocks. Have stocks peaked? People keep wondering, of course, that's the trillion-dollar question. You know, are they, have they gone as high as they're going to go despite what's happening between China and the U.S.? You know, I, I feel as though they are, they, they could have tops or they're very close to topping. The market is just, it's just oozing this, this feeling and the, and the sentiment and the volume and where money, how money is kind of moving from a day to day basis. It feels like the market has put in a top and, you know, it might it might still push to a nominal new high, but as a long term investor putting money in the stock market at this point, I mean it's a really high risk play. There's I don't see a whole lot more upside, maybe five, maybe ten percent, but I think 
all the risk is really it's to the downside or the potential really because the falling market falls three to seven times faster than it rises. So, I mean, you can make a lot of money if you're on the right side, but, you know, we are still technically holding up in a, in a bull market. We're in the late stages. Depending where this break goes over the next four or five trading sessions, where the stock market is going to go from this sideways channel, if it breaks up, you've got to be long. You've got to stay long. You're going to want to get out of the, the risk-off assets. You're going to want to get out of bonds and out of precious metals, and they're going to correct fairly hard while the stock market has a, another push higher. But, uh, you know, I do feel as though that we are going to continue to sell lower. This, to me, is still a bearish formation. And um, I am expecting lower prices from here. I think we're going to see price stall out, sell off, and we're going to break those June lows. And we could we could have seen the top already. That's that's kind of the way I'm leaning. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, 59% of their holdings now are in cash. Does that tell us anything about the markets and their potential direction? Yeah, I think it does for sure. You know, I've been talking to a lot of different fund managers, advisors, and it's crazy because the SEC is is clamping down saying, hey, you've got to keep your clients in a position. And they do not count cash as a position. So the SEC is saying if you're going to manage money and charge a fee, you can't put them in cash. You've got to force them into a trade. And it really sucks. The fact that Ber- Berkshire Hathaway can do that is amazing because cash is a position, in my opinion. Uh, it's one of the safest plays to be in. Uh, when there's uncertainty and a potential major top. And uh, to me, that fund knows what's going on. They can see the futures looking pretty dreary. If they're moving to cash, they're, that means they're not even trusting a lot of different assets or potential uh, equities because, um, you know, their cash is king. And remember when we we saw brokerage firms go under and take everyone's money with them during uh, the 08 crash. So, uh yeah, it's a definitely a warning sign. I think things are going to get really ugly. The question is, does it start in the next week or two? Like, was it put in in, in the July and we're in a bear market or a downtrend now? Or do, is this going to happen a little bit later, November maybe? We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after the break. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, natural gas is making a move? Yeah, I really like natural gas. I've been uh, talking about it this week. And more or less, natural gas is coming into a very strong time of the year, seasonality-wise. And uh, it also came all the way down to test the $2 mark a few weeks ago. And uh, more or less, cycle analysis, momentum is shifting to the upside. Everything is starting to favor the upside. Now, it is still, when you look at the long-term chart, like a weekly chart, it is still making a series of lower lows and lower highs. But on a short-term basis, it's actually showing some very strong signs that it is in an early stage trend reversal and i like natural gas i think it's got potential to have a very strong pop um, last last september we saw it go from about two dollars and 75 cents all the way up to almost five dollars over a, a three month a two and a half month window and we've kind of got a similar type of setup seasonality wise is here momentum is shifting so i really like natural gas and it's trading higher the last couple sessions up to today, up uh, 3.5%. So it's starting to show some life, and uh, it's something I think people should start looking at. Crude, is it just going to churn in the same spot? Well, crude, crude's trying to rally as well. Crude, I mean, commodities should, in general, kind of firm up a little bit more here 
I think there's going to be, uh, I think we're going to start to see commodities in general continue to kind of move higher. Natural gas is definitely, or sorry, crude oil is naturally um, uh, struggling here at resistance from the last two weeks. It kind of hits the same level and rolls over and sells off. And, it, and from a technical standpoint, it is very similar actually to the SP 500, where it's trading in a range kind of between 53 or 52 and about 57. So it's stuck in there. And if it breaks to the upside, then we're going to have a really nice run back up to 64. So there's some pretty good potential there. If it does break down uh, below uh, the 52, then we're going all the way back down to 44, 43. So it is in a range. We're just looking for a breakout in one of those directions to get involved. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Grand Portage Resources' Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources' trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeule. And Chris, gold has been on quite a charge, and now silver seems to be picking up. What do you see for gold and silver? Yeah, well, I, I really like gold and silver. They've they've both pretty much rallied up to the targets that we put on them back uh, in May, and really silver tagged actually our resistance level within a couple pennies this morning or yesterday actually, and it, and and it's uh it's starting to roll over. To me, the safe haven assets are are ready. They're they're overdone. They're ready for some type of pause or pullback, and I think that. We could see that for a few days. I mean, they're in a very strong move to the upside, and I think they're going to continue to go higher. But short-term basis, I think this week they're they're going to continue to be soft and trade sideways for potentially a week or so. But, I mean, once they've had a few days of a breather, they could very easily just continue to keep on moving because fear is growing. I mean, we've got big, big players, Ray Dalio moving in to gold, talking about it a lot. And um, it's just, you know, gold is going to be the next kind of safe haven play when we're going to have, I think, a pretty serious global crisis where a lot of countries are are struggling with debt issues and currencies continue to fall. Rates are going negative on, uh, I can't remember how how many countries, but it is a, a lot of countries. So it costs less to hold gold at a half a percent storage fee per year versus having money in a savings account where you're paying three quarters or one percent uh, in some of these countries. So naturally, gold is going to be a very strong asset to be owned, and people haven't really caught on to that aspect of it. So I love metals. I think uh, they're going to have great potential. I think we're going to see some type of currency back with gold or silver uh, over the next year or two, and it's going to change the game. It's going to really get people moving into metals because it'll have a lot more I don't know. I, I I would say value to it that people will start to add into it, and they don't mind paying a premium. Well, Russia and China have been buying all the gold they can lay their hands on for about the last six years. Would their currencies be the first to be backed by gold? I, I think they will be. I was reading a little bit about that the other day, and I think some one of them or both of them together come out with some currency that they can work together and. It'll be huge. It'll be a major turning point, uh, having a, a gold or silver-backed currency, because it actually will be something that has true value, not this fiat currencies that just every country just keeps printing themselves into debt and making their value go down. I mean, uh, you know, these countries are not run like a business. They're run so poor. Everybody just keeps going bankrupt and making more money. It's just it's brutal. So metals is, I think, going to be the place to be going forward financially. Are countries like the UK and Canada really going to regret selling off all of their gold several years ago? Oh, I know. I was looking at that yesterday. I, I remember reading 
Canada sold everything. I was looking at the table of all the countries who own gold and what they've been accumulating. You look at Canada, zero. <laughs> it's like, what the heck are they doing? They're like giving away the only real asset that has value. And I just don't get politics. I mean, they're just a bunch of, you know, crooks and morons. <laughs> the Harper government melted down gold coins that were worth more as collector items than they were as just pure bu- bullion. Oh, yeah. I know. The stories go on. I mean, it's it's ridiculous how countries and government run. Uh, it's not even worth talking about. Because <laughs> it'll just make you angry. <laughs> Chris, what's happening with Bitcoin? Oh, uh, Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin's, you know, it had that huge rally. It is in a, a major consolidation phase the last, um, you know, two and a half months or so. It, to me, is still looking very bullish. If you were to look at the weekly chart and zoom way out um, as far as futures go, which is about a year and a half, two years, uh, it is a very strong bull flag formation, and the volume all favors higher prices still. It just it had a huge run. It went from 3000 up to 14000 and now it's taking a breather. And based on the time frame and the pattern size, I... I you know, I think it's ready to reverse any month. It's uh, uh, primed and ready to go. But at this point, you got to let it do its thing. It's still selling off. It is testing down near support. And um, if this 9,000, 9,500 area gets broken to the downside, we could see it very swiftly move back down to 7,500. But at this point as a long term, it it is down at a nice price it's at support it's got a very strong long-term pattern if this was a run then the next run will pretty much take us up to about 17,500 maybe even 20,000 again so this pattern is it, it's showing we could go all the way back up to 20,000 based on this current rally and the pullback level chris thank you so much for chatting with us hey thanks for having me on the show jim my guest has been Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.